Hello and welcome to a brief overview of the Pro Ledger's bookkeeping software for real estate agents in the USA. In this video, you're going to see how you can quickly and easily keep track of all your business and personal expenses. And, and this is the opening screen of the program. And on the screen, you're going to see those three buttons, current file, new file, and open file. Now, if you're using the program for the very first time, we're going to be using new file to create a brand new bookkeeping file. After you've got a file going, the next time you open, you can go back to open file and then navigate to the bookkeeping file and you can open it using this function. Or if you tag the file as your current file, and we'll show you how that tagging go works in a minute, then you could use that option. But since it's the first time using the program, we're going to create a brand new bookkeeping file by choosing new file. In the next screen, you're going to see that you can pick different types of files, and we're going to choose a file for real estate agents, which means that the file will open up with a chart of accounts that you could use as a realtor in the U.S., and you really wouldn't have to make any changes to it. You could simply start making your entries quick and easy. But of course, you could also customize it if you like. So anyway, let's choose the real estate agents file. And here we have is the main screen. Now in the main screen, you'll notice at the top, all our buttons are visible across there for our main functions. And then we have uh, our enter record screen and then the file name and a few other things that we're gonna review in the video. Okay, the first thing you're gonna, want, you're gonna notice is that the file name is called new file one, which is very generic. So to give it a proper file name to set up the file, we're going to go up there and choose the blue save button. And when we choose the save button, we can choose the location on our computer where you want the file to be saved. So let's say I want to save this in my OneDrive folder, then give it a name, any name that you would like. And let's say this is our 2018 bookkeeping file, for example. And each year the you can make a, a new bookkeeping file just the same way. Choose save. And now you can see that our file name is more descriptive. Okay, now that we've got our bookkeeping file created, let's go to the setup screen, the top right button, and take a look at some of the setups here. So here we can choose the financial year. So let's change it to 2018. You could also choose the first month of your financial year. So if your financial year starts in May and so on, you can choose that there. You can change your date format. So if you'd rather have the date shown as month, day, year, choose this one. And if you want to put in your business name, which will end up being at the top of each of your reports, then you could put that in there or just your personal name. Under accounts, it gives you some to get started with, but you could edit these account names. You choose the X to delete, or you can choose the the pencil mark to change the change the name or you can add more accounts and just type in the account name now we have another account added and you can do this now or you can do it during the year so we choose close when you're done and then we go down and we can choose our income categories so we can we have several categories already created for income and you can also choose if this category is going to appear on a business financial statement. So later when we see the reports, you're gonna see that there's reports that are overall uh, personal and business and oh, another report that's strictly business. So you can choose you know, where this should show up. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at that a little later. But anyway, when you open up this, you can check or uncheck to see if this uh, account category name should show up on the financial statement for business. Same thing, you can delete, you can edit and you can add categories just by clicking those buttons. You can also sort them in alphabetical order. And the same goes for expense categories. So you can choose the various expense categories and make changes to them. And for example, you can see that some of them, such as uh, some of them might be just strictly personal, like cable TV or clothing or groceries. And you can see that these don't have check marks next to them, but you might want to use this program for all your personal and business stuff. So you have that option or you can get rid of those categories if you choose not to do that. You can also have the sort button 
And also you're going to see one more thing on the right side, split percentages. So if you're using the actual expense method for home office or for your automotive expenses, you can then change, set up the split percentage. And then when you make the entry, it'll automatically do the math on those particular entries. And we'll show you that in a minute when, you, when we do some sample entries. So I'm going here into the edit screen. Now, so you can see, uh, so if you wanted, for example, to have uh, automotive expense at 70-30, just change the ratio. And you can do this any time throughout the year and it'll recalculate all your expenses that are done with the split class on your entry. So anyway, once you're done, you can close it. You can save changes at the bottom and just makes a little note that if you have any other devices with this file open, you need to sync or reload the file to reflect the changes in setup screen. Okay, so our setup is done. Now let's try making some entries. To make an entry, there's this big green button called Enter Record at the top left. So all you do is you click that Enter Record button and then you simply follow the prompts. Rec means, you know, is there no receipt? Is there a foreign currency involved? Uh, or are you going to reconcile the entry against your bank statement or receipt? So, for example, if you have your uh, receipt right now, you might be making this entry strictly based on that. Then later, uh, when you look at your bank statement, you can reconcile that you saw the entry on the receipt and on the bank, and you would just choose the X in that case. But let's just leave it blank for now. We'll reconcile later. Then we can just choose our date. Let's uh, choose any date you would like. Do you want this entry to be repeated? So if it's a monthly fee or expense or monthly income, you can now set that up and you can say, yeah, I want this entry to show up also on February 2nd. Uh, and also I'm going to have this on, let's say, March the 2nd. And then I can have it repeating if I like. The account, let's say it's a visa entry. Let's Now here's where you can choose. Is this 100% business? Is it 100% personal? or is it the split between business and personal according to the split ratio in the setup screen? So you could choose split in that case. But let's just say it's strictly business. Let's say it's uh, advertising and promotion. And you can have pre-written descriptions here or you can type one out, ads, and let's say it's $100. And if you have a receipt, you can choose a receipt manager. You can browse for it and attach it to the entry. You can use the scan receipt feature which uses the webcam on your computer or you can browse for a JPEG image here as well and then you can submit it and it will attach itself to this entry so that's the, how the receipt manager would work and also as you mentioned there's free apps so you know if you're doing this on the computer this is how you would do it but also if you had a free app on your phone then it has a receipt manager function too you can attach receipts to the entry and then later it will sync with your bookkeeping file on your computer and then here you would actually see them and view them so anyway, that's how the receipt manager works. Once you've filled in the prompts, click Submit, and we're done. So then you can see the, re the entry was repeated three times because we did the repeating feature on that. And we can go to our reports. And on the left-hand side, you can see there's an overall report, total, business, and personal. On the right side, there's a business summary only. And you can see that we got the entry advertising promotion $300. There's also a graph. You can choose income, expenses, or just net income. So let's say I just want to see the expenses, and I will say it as a column graph. Now I can see January, February, and March. Those are my expenses. And later when you do your income, you can add income bars to it, and also net income as well. Anyway, we just recorded our expenses for now, so that's all it shows. Let's do another entry. This time we're going to do uh, January the 16th. We have some income so we're going to say it's business we're going to say it's commission income and we can say it's one two three four smith street uh, commission and let's say it's uh, forty five hundred dollars and we can submit okay so now we have some income now when we see the report we have income expenses and at the bottom we can see that there's net income on the overall and on the business statement of forty two hundred dollars and we have four items uh, to reconcile and we have spent $300 in our visa so we can see our income our category um, or account uh, reviews here shows you the overall in out and spent 
and also if you have receivables and payables it shows that in your report as well. Now of course we can see income and expenses for each month. So January we had the income versus the expense and you can see it on a graph or a line graph. You can also add notes. So if you want to type in any notes, you forgot a receipt or whatever you like, so just press submit to save that. And there's a little help button to take you to a bunch of videos that are on the website that help you deal with other more advanced features. Okay, so let's go back to the records. And as you can see, I'm just flipping between these three screens by these three buttons, record, report, and graph. So you can just toggle between them. Now, for example, you can see that there's a bunch of Visa and there's one savings account. So if we want, or we can filter these records by month or by quarter. And so I filter it. Now I can see just my January entries, for example. And then when I go to my report, it just shows me the January uh, report. And on the graph, it just shows me the January graph. So you can see how this, these filters are fully dynamic on all three screens. Uh, which is very, uh, very, very handy. And you can also filter January for Visa only. So you can see January, uh, just your savings and so on. So you can filter with multiple filters. And with categories, let's say I want to see my January commission. You can just do that and show it on a report or on a graph and or the first quarter commissions. So anyway, you got lots of dynamic uh, reports and features to choose from here. You can also use a search magnifying glass. And then at the bottom, you see you can just search by anything that shows up in the description field. So if I want to search by anything that has the word Smith in it, oh, it came up with that one here because it has Smith Street, uh, then you can see just those entries. Or if the uh, total is greater than Let's say in this case $4,000, you can search and it comes up with the entry. So anyway, you can remove the search by clicking that button. And this little black button is like a toggle switch. You can turn that search box on and off. So really what this does is you can use your description field to put in your vendor names, for example. And then later, uh, when you want to search for how much money did I spend at Shell, you just type in the word Shell, choose search. You can see a report, a graph, everything on basically how much you use with the, the, at the Shell service station. So you get the idea of how these uh, reports and filters can work with the search button as well. Okay, so now going back for a second to the top of the screen, you can see also on the right of the file name is the close file button. So if I want to get out of this file, you can get out. And next to that is a gold star. So we can tag this as our current file. So if you're going to be coming back to the same bookkeeping file again and again, you can tag it as your current file. And then next time you open the program, instead of navigating to the bookkeeping file, you can simply just choose the current file option on the opening screen. And then you can just open it that way. So it's a little time saving feature if you like to use it. It's optional. To the right of that is a sync feature. So if you have done entries with one of the apps on your tablet or smartphone, well, if you have the bookkeeping file open on the computer uh, and you hadn't closed it, well, before you start working on that same file, you want to sync it, which means it's actually reloading that file uh, so that you can continue working on it. Oh, I didn't save my work, so now it's synced an empty file, so I you know, have to be careful that when I choose sync that I first save the work that I had done. Anyway, uh, okay, a few more buttons at the top. You can create a new file as, uh, you know, anytime you want. So if you are, for example, a landlord as well, you can create a bookkeeping file for rental properties and allows you to keep track of deposits and so on. And so you can create as many files as you would like for various businesses or projects. And of course, for each year. There's also uh, an import feature and there's a separate video is on how to use this, but you can load a CSV file and import data from any online bank account. You got export as well. So you can take these uh, records or you can take the reports and export them as a spreadsheet file or as a PDF. You can also print the reports and the records. And of course you already saw the setup screen. And really that's all there's to it. Just be sure though, that each time you finish your work that you save it. And then once you've saved it, you can exit out and you are all done.